Hi everybody, Henry with Arizona Roofer here on another uh, episode, if you would like to call it that, Ask a Roofer. Ask a Roofer is uh, sponsored by the uh, Roofer's Coffee Shop, which is a very well-known publication in our industry. And if you go to askaroofer.com, you can ask questions, any kind of roof questions that you want. And several professionals from around the country, such as myself, will give you answers. Could be manufacturers, salespeople, installers, contractors, you name it. So if you want answers, that's the right place to go. Now let's go to our question of the day. Ryan in Kansas asks, now by the way, I come from Kansas, so this is pretty neat. Although he's in Kansas City, I think, and that's actually in Missouri. But that's a whole other story. So he says, hello. I'm in the process of getting a new roof for my home and I'm looking at looking for some advice. My home is 4,400 square foot. Uh, the uh, roof is about 40 squares. It's probably actually about 45 of that. I live in Kansas City and it gets pretty hot in the summer. Yeah, I grew up in Kansas. It does get hot there. Uh, my biggest issue is the upstairs is really hot. Our uh, roof is probably uh, short on vents and we're having the uh, ridge line vents added. Um, my debate is if I, if I should get JF cool shingles or AS, uh, AS22, I don't know what that is, shingles. Um, the added cost of the shingles would be about $2,500. Uh, is the amount worth getting cool shingles? Would it make enough impact knowing that the ridge vent is already being installed? Uh, would the attic, uh, be, would, would an attic fan be a better uh, investment? I do like the AS211, whatever, shingles. I forgive my ignorance on that one. Um, but we live in a, uh, we live in a hell and high wind area. That's no doubt. That area is known for hell storms and high wind and tornadoes all the way down from Kansas down into uh, uh, through Oklahoma and into Texas. So it's called Tornado Alley. You gotta be careful there. Um, my electric bill in the summer got up to four hundred seventy-five dollars. Let me tell you, I lived in this little town here uh, for years called Maricopa, and in that little town, a four hundred seventy-five dollar electric bill was a good bill. People down there were paying seven or eight hundred dollars a month. Uh, for um, houses half the size of yours. Can you believe that? Uh, so I just want to get your thoughts and recommendation. Also, would you rank the shingles in order from uh, good to uh, best? Um, now, in the last part, I'm, I'm not going to rate the shingles from good to best because uh, they all have their place. They all have their uses. And I don't, wanna, I don't want anyone to think I'm putting down one brand and trying to lift up another brand. Um, it's just really what do you need them for? And what does the roofer you've hired, what does he prefer? because the best shingle that he likes to install is probably the best shingle to get installed because he'll do a good job. Uh, you won't have any uh, rub back from him on that. So let's move forward here. Let's just do a really quick talk about in, uh, attic ventilation. Now, forgive me if I seem a little bit off. I just had back surgery uh, less than a week ago and I'm on some pain medications and this happened because I worked really hard for a whole bunch of years and I just slowly injured my back. So that's one of the reasons I do these videos right here is because I want to teach young people how to do things properly so they don't find themselves at 54 years old uh, with stitches in their back and suffering and agonizing pain. Now the pain that I was having is gone and it's now a healing pain so thank goodness for that that'll be gone. So all right now we're going to talk a little bit about uh, ventilation. What is it? Well ventilation is air coming in and air going out. If you uh, understand anything about uh, how ventilation truly works the, the principle is very simple. When air that's cooler from the outside comes into your pot or attic right the uh, BTUs or the heat from your um, attic space will travel into the cooler air and then be sucked out through the uh, through the vent. So what you're going to need is an intake vent, and you'll notice down here at the bottom there's a they have soft vents on this one. It could be box vents closer to the bottom of your of your uh, um, your roof if you don't have an overhang or something. So just some place lower down on your roof that air can travel into, and then you're going to need an exhaust vent. And in this case, they have a ridge vent. I think you mentioned that in your question, which is what I would recommend anyways. So um, you need to make sure that you do have something uh, happening at the bottom of your uh, at the bottom of your roof for an intake area. All right. Now I said a lot there. Let's move on to the next slide here. Uh, that what we're looking at is that pretty beautiful blown in insulation. Now that insulation over time will compress itself. And the more compressed it becomes, the less effective it is at insulating your attic. So you want to go check your um, your attic insulation, and if you need to, you can blow some more in. If you if you're kind of a, a do-it-yourself sort of guy, it's not really hard to do, but it is very messy. So wear the right outfit because you'll get it everywhere, and it won't come out of your eyeball for a week if you get it in there. So do protect yourself. And now let's move on to the next thing here. It's called uh, this is called polarium. 
So heirloom is one of several different types of radiant bearers that you can install as an underlayment, right? You don't have to only just have the uh, radiant barrier shingle. You can do it with uh, in, with the underlayment as well. Now, uh, I've used polar loom myself. That's why I put it in here. I put it on my mother's house. She had a 15 degree difference from one side of her house to the other side of her house. And once we installed this and shingles, that's it. Um, same ventilation, uh, her, uh, her house evened out. And there was no longer that big drastic change in temperature. 15 degrees is a lot. And she used to complain because she'd be walking from her living room to the laundry room. And by the time she got back, she, she would say either she was walking to the Arctic or she was walking to the desert. One of those two things. And then, of course, you have your radiant uh, barrier, your radiant or your reflective shingles. Um, it just really has to do with how they coat the uh, minerals on there that's pressed into the uh, shingle. If you know how they're made, you got asphalt over a fiberglass mat, and then they press in the minerals over that. Let me have a drink here real quick. And so they use a certain kind of acrylic that is reflective in nature, and that will help bounce the light off. So what I would suggest is all the above. Right. Check your attic insulation. And if you need to replenish the attic insulation, consider using um, a, a radiant barrier type of, of uh, underlayment. Polarolume is one of many. You might ask your roofing contractor about that. Make sure you have an intake as well as an exhaust. You want to have both. Uh, one without the other is really not effective. And if you do those things, then you should be OK. So my name is Henry again. Uh, there's a little bit about me. I've been in the industry for more than 30 years, almost 40, but I kind of want to say 30, so I feel younger. <laughs> and uh, um, I, I contribute to different uh, publications in the industry, and I do things like this, Ask a Roofer and stuff like that, and do Lunch and Learns. I'll do presentations for groups of people, um, realtors or um, community managers, uh, commercial managers, whoever would like to hear about roofing, which to me should be everybody, but uh, believe it or not, some people find it a boring topic. Can you believe that? So anyways, um, when you hire me, I am a consultant. I'm not a contractor. I was a contractor for many, many years. I know the ins and outs of contracting for sure. I've, I've, I've uh, built and sold several companies, uh, but at this point in my life, I sell my advice and my experience. When I show up to do a job for you, um, my report is my product. I'm not trying to sell you any kind of repairs or whatnot. So I don't have to like call to check the warehouse and see what we have in the warehouse and try to sell you that. It, it doesn't matter to me. It's moot. Um, and even in, it may sound weird, but even if you don't ever do what I recommend, if you never do that, then it's still, it still doesn't really matter to me that much. Um, cause you, you know, you paid for my advice and if you don't use it, well, that, that's on you. But, um, but the point of all this is that I, uh, I, oh, there's a lot of wind outside. We might be getting hell here right now, and there's something. Ha! Huh. So, anyways, I'm going to cut this video short right here and go see what's going on outside before my gazebo gets blown away. It's, it's yeah, it looks pretty bad. And if you want to uh, reach out to me, you can at 480-435-5190, 480-435-5190, or you can go to my website, theazroofexpert.com, theazroofexpert.com. And again, if you have a question, if you would like to ask me directly, feel free to. Um, but if you would like to see what a lot of different people say about this and get some different uh, opinions from the industry abroad, uh, go to askaroofer.com, askaroofer.com. Thank you. Have a great day.